All right. Let's do it. These are the tools that a beginner improviser can use to create tension and resolution. So I hope you guys have been listening to a bunch of guitar solos and all that stuff and really listening to the rhythms. If you guys haven't, go and do that before and then just turn off this video, go back and start listening to, to some rhythms. Um, even if it just like listen to one song, like Sweet Child of Mine, listen to the, the guitar solo and listen to how all the rhythms are changing, please, you have to do it. Otherwise, none of this stuff matters. It's so important, please. Okay, now, there are so many things that you can do on a guitar, um, on any instrument. They all have their own nuances. You can be very, very clever. You know, you can mix picking techniques. You can do a bunch of different things. Um, but basically, what we're going to do is go over a couple of things that any beginner can do and intermediate and pro players um, definitely would love to just hone um, and start thinking about in the sense of tension and resolution. So basically... The very first thing that's most important is the duration of the note, the rhythm. So the rhythm of the note is going to create the vibe. It's going to create, it's going to determine whether or not you understand the song you're playing under. A lot of people are immediately like, what scale, blah, blah, blah. It's the rhythm of the note. If you know the groove of the song and then you just play to the groove of that song using rhythm, um, oh man, you're just immediately locked in with the song. Like you're... You're, you're slaying. You could play two notes and people will love it. And there have been solos that are like two or three notes and they slay. Um, so that's most important. So in my order of priority, I, I wrote it down here on the list in case I forget. So we've got duration of the note. So if you're going to do a short note, then do a long note. You could do short, short, long. Or you could do long. You can already see that just just doing such a simple thing like that. Da, 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 already, you already felt something. It's so simple. So simple. But duration of the note, bam. That's the very first tool that you're going to go for. Now, the next one is an extension of the duration of the note, which is the duration of the phrase. So that could be like you're doing a bunch of notes and then you are tying off that phrase. So there could be multiple things that are happening and then the the phrase either you do like a long phrase, then you do a short phrase and then or a short phrase, a long phrase. So by phrase, I mean like say I come in and I do a melody and I'm like. So I go. Long. And then I do a bunch of short phrases. So easy, right? That's the that's the concept of the phrase. Um, and like you can extend it. Like one thing I love to do is with phrases, say I'll be like, I'll repeat repeat a phrase like two times and on third times I'll, I'll give you something else. And that is in itself the tension resolution. I'm setting you up with like... So you see how I did like the same thing twice and you got to own it because it might feel weird doing it twice. But if you do it a third time and you swap it, swap, swap it around and do something else, that creates tension and resolution. And then, ooh, you can even come back in. You know, you can just come back into it and then start being more creative with it. That'll be like, we'll be doing some of that stuff uh, in the course as well, like with, with improvisation. Now, once you got those two feeling really comfortable as tools and you're like, I've got that. Now, the third one is the scale. But I was telling you scales don't matter. They don't matter. We don't care about scales. They only matter in the sense of playing in the right key. If you know the scale, all those notes there are going to work. And then every single note outside the scale, depending on how clever you are, can also fit in. To, and um, But once you can do the minor pentatonic, you pretty much have be, you've been set up for any any song really, unless there's a bunch of chord changes, key changes, things that are more clever, but that that's not what we're about right now. We're just, we're dipping our toes in. So the pentatonic is gonna be fantastic for you. So the scale, um, the scale should not run you. Do not let a scale run you. It is like the scariest thing ever watching guitar players that are like, all right, it's time to solo. They said the keys in like A minor, let's go. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, you would know what I mean because I've actually seen professionals do that. It's embarrassing. Don't be that person. The scale does not run your show. So the scale's purpose is only to give you the letters of the alphabet. It is up to you to make the words and communicate. Just remember, that is all the scale is. It is just letters of an alphabet. You're not going around telling people like, H-O-W, A-R-E, Y-O-U. That's not how you communicate. You say, how are you? And that is what tension and resolution in music and rhythm is. Um, the scale is just the letters. So please don't be going around spelling stuff out for people. They don't want to hear you spell stuff out with your guitar. So please, that's what scales are all about. They are a tool. They are not, they are not the meat at all. They're just, they're just a tool. Okay. Now the next one, we've got slides and bends. So slides and bends are embellishments on notes that are really, really handy. We love them. Uh, they will make you feel bluesy. They will make you feel cool, a bit country, whatever. Um, basically, uh, bends, you want to practice, if you haven't practiced many bends, uh, the practice of the bend is pick the note that you're going for. So say, for instance, I'm playing in a pentatonic. I'm like, I've got those notes there. And I'm like, actually, I want to go, or I want to get that note. So I should have got my electric out for this. Um, I hate bending on an acoustic. But basically, you pick the note, and then you slide down, and then you bend up to it. And that's how you practice your bends. Bends are really, really handy for like getting sustain on notes. You see how we get that? Ooh, it sounds so bluesy. Very, very cool. Um, slides, uh, you can either slide up to a note, slide down. They're a great little legato technique that is very, very cool. Um, but when it comes to slides, one thing that's really, really underrated is using slides as a really subtle embellishment on a rhythm. So instead of like going, which people will do, um, instead of going ba, 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 that's the sound that you're going, ba, 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 you're like sliding into that note. You ba, 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 Blah, 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 boom, boom. So that's that's slides. So bends and slides, uh, they're a bit more intermediate. Um, don't stress if you're a beginner and jumping into them. But uh, one thing is just with the slides, you know, be clear if you're doing a slide or and if you're doing a bend, um, do not be casual about bending. Uh, if you can't bend, uh, you need to start practicing by picking the note and then you bend into it. But we will jump in, in the improvisation practice, I might I might do like a bending, we'll do like a bending session, and I'll be like, ooh, like air bending, avatar. It'll be an avatar session. Avatar, the last guitar airbender. Maybe we could do a loop over an avatar song. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. Um, picking techniques, that's another. So we've got like two kind of like main picking techniques. You've got legato techniques and you've got like your um, staccato techniques. So t staccato ones are going to be using your pick or your fingers. You know I'm getting that. Uh, so you can either use your fingers for picking or you can use the guitar pick for the picking. Um, they will create a sudden sound. It's a bit more aggressive. And then you have legato techniques which are like hammer-ons and pull-offs or the slides very very easy um, other picking techniques that come in like sweeps little things like that I'm so garbage at sweeps uh, tapping you can do that too oh man my guitar has been off this whole time. No, I promised myself I wouldn't do that. But we'll see how we go. Hopefully the recording is, is not too shitty. Um, I can always re-record this. Uh, now, the next one is volume. So volume is the other thing that is really underrated. Playing quietly and playing loudly. Turning your guitar off, turning your guitar on. <laughs> so... You know, 
know, that's that's what, what volume is. Play softly, play loudly. Play loudly, bring it down. It creates a lot of tension and resolution. It's especially effective when you're going to use phrases as tools. Um, so, yeah. Those are the basic tools that we're going to go over for improvisation. Um, but, yeah, give it a good try. Uh, listen to the recordings again. So this is the homework when I say give it a good try. I mean, give it a try. Go listen to the recordings that you've been, like, of the guitars, that you the, the solos. Now that we have the, the stress of rhythm and you guys have that down, you're like, all right, Luan's very, very serious about rhythm and tension and resolution. Now go in and have a listen and see if you can pick out the different techniques that I'm talking about here, like the sliding, the bending, um, you know, all that kind of stuff, the phrase lengths, the rhythms, things like that. What scale are they using? You don't have to be super serious about the scale, but majority of these um, like rock gods that we love, they all use pentatonic scales and they just do like slight iterations on them. Um, so it's not that crazy. Uh, but have a good look at it and um, we'll move into the next video, which is going to be just jumping into the pentatonic scale and getting you guys ready to rock and roll with a pentatonic. So can't wait to chat about that one. All right. <laughs> See you soon.